Greetings dapplings and welcome to the first week in review recap video where I'll be offering a summary of the games I've played this week and how the series have progressed as well as touching on my plans for the near future. While it's probably obvious, I guess it would be best if I say this explicitly. Here be drag- I mean, here be spoilers. If you've missed any of the videos I've uploaded this week, but still mean to go back and watch them later, then be aware that this summary may spoil some of the surprises. But with that said, let's kick things off with the first tastes we've had this week. At the start of the week, we sampled the bold flavors of Carnage in Scraps, a vehicle design and combat game by Moment Studio. A very satisfying experience, especially the vehicle designer. Though a little on the quiet side when it came to multiplayer, we did have a great stream midweek where myself and many dapplings battled it out. We even had 10 game keys to give away, further increasing the pool of players, and I'm happy to note that many of the dapplings have continued to play and organize matches amongst themselves since, so if you're looking for a game, then do check out the Dappling Steam group, as you may well find a couple of players who are more than willing to arrange a match around your time zone. Following Scraps, I had the opportunity to become addicted to, I mean, to play the fast-paced and comical Super Dungeon Run, which is a mixture of Diablo and Pikmin. An unlikely combination, to be sure, but frighteningly effective, and I'm pleased to note that there's some interest in seeing me extend the first taste a little longer, or starting a full series, though any decision on that will likely have to wait a few days so I can properly gauge the interest based on the engagement with the last few episodes. Moving on from my first taste miniseries, I focused on three games this week. The old favourite, Robocraft, the increasingly popular From the Depths, and Terraria Co-op, my newest series. So, starting with Robocraft, we explored some of the hotfix changes that came out last week and went on a little bit of a holiday to the lower ranks using the Aegis, a low mark plasma hovercraft, before refocusing on tweaking the design of the Solenopsis in Wicked 2. I incorporated quite a few of the more frequently suggested changes from the comments and spent some time then exploring how they had affected the balance of the bot, both in the battle arena and team deathmatch. Finally, after some waiting for the game's flurry of changes to come, I launched a new tutorial series, Robocraft from Scratch, where, armed with a brand new account, I have begun to explore the game from a new player's perspective. Part tutorial and part guide, and also part exploration for me, this series is largely aimed at newer players, allowing them to join me as I explore the game starting at level 1 and working my way up, evolving a smaller number of bots through the ranks as I unlock new components. In the coming weeks, I'll probably be aiming to mix up the From Scratch gameplay with my regular series, likely with a continued focus on my higher rank bots in that, but I'm also thinking on how to continue the Dapper Build series I started. Obviously with the removal of tiers it does change things up a little and I need to figure out a new way to move that series forward. But next up, From the Depths. My third season has been characterized by a more cautious style of play, with deliberate designs for my ships. At the opening of this week, I designed the first and possibly only satellite of the series. Christened the Argus, it is designed to hover high over the battlefield, peering far behind enemy lines to give us advanced warning of incoming attacks. Additionally, we finally completed the Avatar's armaments, though we did manage to resist the urge to make the side cannons too accurate or give them an especially long range, but nevertheless, they'll probably make the ship even more deadly in close quarters if that were even possible. I suspect that in the following few episodes we'll probably be focusing on diversifying our fleet while also mopping up the remaining deepwater guard forces in the Eriwick region before moving on a little bit closer to their HQ. And now finally on to Terraria. I have really enjoyed this week's episode. Starting with our attempt to cross the western crimson biome in search of a landed meteorite, which ultimately ended with both a crimson outpost and finding the angler at the western ocean, but no meteor, we then took a bit of a break to work on the buildings around our home, adding not only a house for the angler, but also beginning work on a grand construction, though not everything went according to plan. 
But with the base growing ever more fancy, we set out to the east in search of the ever elusive meteor, and after only a short stay and a death, we were both sporting brand new meteorite armor complete with light shows. I am very, very pleased about that, and in the coming episodes there will likely be a bit of a mix of building and exploration, continuing the fancifying of our village, including finally adding the haikus you've all been so kind to write to our ever-expanding collection of graves, and possibly a return to the jungle now that we have better gear to brave the perils therein. And that about sums up the past week. As for the other games, I'll be focusing on getting a start on the Reassembly 8000p tournament underway, which will likely mean that my other series such as Pillars of Eternity and Cataclysm will remain on hold at least for a little while longer. But that brings us to the end of this episode. I really hope you've liked it and look forward to any feedback you might have to offer on the series, on the format, on the idea behind the series, this sort of summary at the end of the week. But until next time, and as always, do take care.